Hey chat, I'm back. It's me, Joseph Rothschild, aka MBT, and let's go! We're up to top four of the fourth Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series. And all the fun decks are gone. They're all gone. Every... Every single fun deck is gone. Uh, there, it's just Eldritch and Ad Emancipator, just Secret Slayer's meta, that's the only thing worth playing. And, um, we are seeing it firsthand here today. Top four is three Eldritch players, two in a mirror, that's Cyber VX, aka Jason Leonard versus Anju, and our feature match for semifinals. It's Lundredy, uh, who picked up an amazing game, uh, versus, uh, Bokimane, who picked up an amazing game themselves, I, I think against, um, Invoked Mech Knight in a really tight, uh, series that went to Game 3. I wish we could have watched, uh, but we had to watch Salaman Great lose to Summon Limit, um, uh, according to, uh, my, uh, orders from, uh, the Illuminati. So, um, I am gonna send you over there, and, uh, we will, uh, I, I guess we will root for Ad Emancipator in, in order to facilitate a non-closeout. So, let's go now. Alright, so I never thought that it was going to be, uh, that it was going to come down to this. That I was going to have to root for Ad Emancipator. Uh, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I know, shocking that Jim FTK got, uh, knocked out. I, I personally was shocked, but not that much. And it looks like the Adam Emancipator player has won the die roll. That's about the best you can hope for. Gonna leave with a copy of Tenyu Spirit Ad Hara, just a free special summon that also happens to be an Earth Monster, followed up by a Researcher. Activate the effect of Researcher, and those are some good picks. Dodo -do -do Dwarf, Go 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 Glove, as well as Doki Doki are pretty good, but telegraphs a lot about the hand, which one they get. And Dota Dwarf it is. Doki Doki's kind of high investment. It doesn't go into any further extenders. Uh, from this position, we're probably going into a Halka Fibrax, though, uh, uh, you know, these combos aren't necessarily linear. A lot relies on um, what the hand looks like. <laughs> Chat already counting three, they say. Uh, do you think this outlet deck is playing to be remain? Because... I, I would be surprised. Our only Eldritch and Ad Emancipator and Top Cut. No, Top Cut had some pretty interesting decks. There was also a Mech Knight Invoked and a Salaman Great, as well as a Gem Knight FTK, all of which were promptly defeated. All right, Halk it is. We'll go into Halk. We'll use its effect to get a tuner from deck. Likely we'll get an O Lion, so we can make ourselves a Raptite and get a token in the process. And folks, that's five. <laughs> the O Lion in hand. Sometimes it just happens. Ooh, and there they go, immediately into the Appaloosa. That's going to trigger the O-Lion and Graveyard. Uh, telegraphs a lot about the hand and provides Nibiru insurance. That is the last point of interaction, provided you don't have exactly infinite impermanence and Nibiru. All right, we're going to bring back this copy of Researcher. We've already activated the Researcher's effect, and that's a really bad uh, stat line. Five stars? Ah, Monster Reborn. Okay, now I understand the entire hand. Going to bring back the Dodo -do Dwarf, go, 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 glove. And from here, the game's over. How did Mech Knight Invoke do? A uh, really, really close game against uh, this Eldritch player, uh, lost in a 1-2. Alright, we're gonna go for Raptite here, and wow, just everything under the sun off the top. Uh, getting the Adam Emancipator Seeker seems pretty good, because of course it can turn into more uh, monsters, but getting the Go-Go-Go Gigas enables the effect of the Dodo -do Dwarf Go-Go-Go Glove in Graveyard, uh, and we can extend that way. We can now overlay for Gallant Granite and add a Block Dragon to the hand, something that we are sorely missing. And it looks like that is going to be the play. Gallant activating its effect, detaching a go go, -Go Gigas. We have not used that effect yet to add a block dragon. We have a ton of earth monsters in the graveyard. Actually, we don't. We have three. We're going to banish them all to get block dragon to their side of the field. And what's step two? Well, we can go into Mask Rain off these two, and that is what we're going to do. That's going to trigger go, uh, the Block Dragon in Graveyard to add Seeker, Researcher, and Gigantes, probably. We could go for another two if we had one. Maybe a Doki Doki. I think we've used our normal summon. But I'm not sure. Did we actually? Have we used our normal summon? We have, because Hadhara is in a rock. Alright, Seeker effect first. We're going to activate Seeker's effect. Oh, whoa. 
Was that a whiff? No, it did find a Doki first. I just missed it. Doki block Madolce Petiting Sister and Double Dark Ruler. Close though. Very close. All right, so we're going to go into a Boralode Savage Dragon. We're going to equip a Halcafibrax from the graveyard. And then we've got a two. If only we had one other two. Going to go into a Union Carrier on this Boralode Savage Dragon. Just very, very frustrating that you can do this. Um, Union Carrier allows you to uh, activate its effect to target a monster you control. And unfortunately, uh, this uh, Boralode Savage Dragon is dark, so you can equip from your deck a copy of Dragon Buster Destruction Sword to lock your opponent out of the extra. This plays through Dark Ruler no more, because they now have to have not only Dark Ruler, but also a removal spell for Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. Good luck! <clears throat> so, like, imagine, if you can, two cards that out this board. Two cards that out this board. It would have to be exactly Dark Ruler evenly. Alright, so we're going to go for uh, Appaloosa here. <laughs> Alpha Cretan saying, this implies Eldritch uses the extra. Have you seen the decks that have been topping? Sphere Mode. Sphere Mode would be a start. Sphere Mode actually cleans up everything. And <laughs> nobody plays that. Certainly not in the main. Alright, so Cursed Eldland is fine. Unsure if you let that resolve. I would think about it for sure. The problem is if you get like an uh, Eldlich and you activate the Eldlich effect... You can still fire off the Appaloosa. The Appaloosa represents so much against this deck because um, none of the monsters on field are activating their effects and therefore don't uh, threaten it. Like, you can deal with both halves of the Eldritch just by using the Appaloosa, not by using any of your Omni Negates. Yeah, Union Carrier being used in this way is a really, really good argument against collective action. Alright, gonna fire off the Appaloosa on that Eldritch, and uh, the Eldritch deck targeting the extra deck lock. That just tells you about the quality of format we are currently in. The control deck that was playing Extravagance a month ago is now really, really excited to out the Domain Lock. This is a really, really hard uh, pill to pass up. I mean, it would it would take a lot for me not to uh, activate bore load on this. Ooh, going for the zero zero one, and then the discard of the O Lion gets the material necessary for Halka Fibrax. Chat, if only Scars was here to banish these extra decks. Oh, if Scars was here, we would be having a fun old time. Now we're going to fire off this copy of IP Masquerina now, sending the Block Dragon so we can activate the effect of Nightmare Phoenix. Wow, that's a fantastic tuck. Sending that copy of 001, I expect, back into the deck, though the token works as well. Uh, we're going to discard a Researcher, and this is going to trigger Block Dragon as well. Block Dragon's already unfair, but activating it on both players' turns is a special kind of hell. Getting Guardian and uh, two Ad Emancipator monsters insurance for our next turn plays. Unicorn with the draw because it's linked to uh, Union Carrier as well. You could have ashed it. Alright, so we're going to activate the Graveyard Effect of Eldlich. I imagine this will fiend out the final Appaloosa activation. And wow, that is just unbelievable. The entirety of this extremely pushed card completely devastated by Appaloosa, the effect monster negator against a deck with no effect monsters that it really aims to resolve the effect of. It's weird that this control deck operates in this way and still loses to Appaloosa on occasion. <laughs> it's an Appaloosa domain lock. Setting a card, just miserable. That's gotta be... I'm trying to even think what you would set. Maybe it's a hand trap? A hand trap that you couldn't fire before you uh, appaloosa -ed. At end step, we're going to... Uh... Activate Boralode, stopping the Haketo. They're only going to get the Conquistador effect here. And this has got to be the end of the game. I mean, from this position, it's going to be very, very hard to lose.
This is game one, chat. The Ad Emancipator player uh, was able to win the die roll, and this ensued. Uh, you kind of get locked into choice paralysis here. Hard to make a decision uh, when you have absolutely everything at your disposal. You can normal summon this copy of uh, Guardian. You can special summon a copy of uh, anything you want. You can go into a block dragon. You probably want to link off this Opelousa and this Union Carrier. Then you've got the spaces for the Ad Emancipator cards. You can potentially go into another Synchro Boss, something like a Herald. Uh, with the extra spaces, and uh, end your combo, of course, with Boral Sword in order to OTK your opponent. All right, we're going to normal summon an Analyzer. Don't like to do that, but it's a, not a big deal in this situation. Uh, and that's going to be the scoop out of Bokimane and uh, Adam Emancipator one game away from finals. More importantly, Adam Emancipator's one game away from finals, and they also are going to get to play at least one game on the play. So, you know, at bare minimum, uh, Adam Emancipator is going to be able to uh, go first once, and uh, the back is going to be against the wall for the Eldritch player to draw something like Dark Ruler evenly, Dark Ruler Lightning Storm on very specific boards, uh, Sphere Mode, Nibiru, uh, under the right conditions. See if I can check in on the other match real quick. It is still in progress. That's that's all I know. Alright, so uh, for game two, the Eldritch player has led with a tuning. Tuning, milling, tuning! Well, at least it's not an Eldritch trap. They're then going to activate the effect of Magician Souls, and this is more than full combo. Uh, being able to summon a Halka Fibrax without using the effect of... Uh, Jet Synchron means you have ultimate insurance for your plays. You don't necessarily have to get uh, 001 from the Halka Fibrax. Um, you can potentially end on more negates, depending on what your extra deck looks like. I mean, it, it is really uh, having your cake and eating it too. All right, there is the Link Haribo. And next is the Crystron Halka Fibrax. Again, uh, there are many different builds of this deck. Um... Uh, if you're playing Lee's build, you're not on 001. You're instead on stuff like uh, O-Lion combos. Um, but if you're playing uh, the more recent builds uh, pioneered by uh, individuals uh, like Cam, um, then you are going to plus to infinity while executing this combo. So we're going to go from Halka Fibrax into Linkross. Linkross is going to summon two tokens. Now these can't be used for Link material, but they can be used as the tribute cost for a Link monster in Graveyard, a.k.a. Link Haribo. So from here, you can go into Barricade Borg Blocker, and how great is that? This card's a machine! Uh, this can make Auroradon, and now we can use Auroradon's effect. So uh, having a 1 on your side of the field that's not a tuner frees up a ton of combo options. We're going to go ahead and get the 001 from the graveyard here. Now, if we so desire, we can go 001 and token into something like a Jet Synchron, or a uh, Formula Synchron. We're first going to get a Mecha Phantom Beast from our deck. This is going to be um, the O-Lion. Gosh, there's just so much you can do. I'm just flabbergasted by the amount of plays this deck still has available. Whoa! Whoa! Sending everything for uh, the new card in Eternity Code, Ravenous Crocodon Arceus. Now, this was made with four material. So you're going to be able to draw three cards when this resolves, and you're going to be able to summon a token off of the 001. Oh, I love it. Oh, draw three cards. And right, so we've got four on our side of the field. You may notice that that's a very beneficial stat line. We're going to bring back this copy of Jet Synchron. Excited to see where they go from here, because this is the point where uh, combos kind of deviate. Five for Trishula. Yeah, and uh, this is about as bad as it gets. That Trishula is a nine. The Arceus is a nine. And uh, you know who really loves to be summoned with two level nine monsters?
Yep, there's the boy. True king of all calamities. VFD coming down uh, in the NA region only because, of course, Trishula is a Shonen Jump promo. And uh, we also drew three cards over the course of that combo. We have access to the entire Eldritch portion of our deck. Uh, this cost us nothing. It cost us absolutely nothing. All we needed was a Jet Synchron and an Extender. Oh, man. I don't think they even activated the effect of Magician Souls. There was no extra draws. Nothing had to be smoothed out. It was just perfect on activation. We'll activate Hakero in Graveyard because, of course, why not? Oh, maybe we did activate Magician Souls. That would be how that got to the Graveyard. <clears throat> Cyber VX has won. Jason Leonard is in finals. Oh, wow. Congrats to the boy. <laughs> all right. So uh, true king of all calamity is going to fire away and declare earth. Are you having fun yet, chat? Are you having fun? This is the control deck. This isn't the combo deck. It drew three cards and made true king of all calamities. This is the control deck. Oh, Monster Reborn for the Croc. <laughs> Monster Reborn for the Croc, fantastic. Okay, well, unfortunately, this card was not made with any, um, <laughs> with any synchro summoned monsters. <laughs> what do you do from here? Set a card pass. I mean, it's a body. It's a body. Can you really argue with a body? All right, we're going to activate uh, Conquistador here. And Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine. Stop activating these at a chain. You're leaving yourself all the way open to Ash Blossom. All right, there goes Croxor. And uh, this is this is the end of the game also. I, I just hate this. This this control deck is about to OTK on turn three. I mean, it locked its opponent out of every single play on turn two, and then it's going to OTK on turn three. It didn't have to activate a single trap card this game. It could have still won. Nibiru is in the opener. Yeah, left in Nibiru. Uh, game two going first, leave in Nibiru. Why not? Why not? Your, your combo is so robust. You draw three cards over the course of your combo. You should be playing Nibiru, unironically. Yeah, Chad, I don't think, uh, as, as much as I like making Calamities and Generator, I don't think Calamities is long for this world either. You can't keep cards like this legal. Just a ticking time bomb. All right, we have made a Rordon completely unnecessary. Absolutely unnecessary. No way to trigger zero, zero, 001 with these monsters on the field. We're just making it for removal. We're going to pop that monster. Then we're going to go to battle phase and attack with everything. Absent to Gores, this is going to be the end of the game. <laughs> Sending the Eldritch. That's so annoying that you can send the Eldritch so that you can activate the Eldritch later. What, what, what was that? Olion's graveyard effect to summon an Olion from the hand. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Hey, you know what? Might as well play around Gores while we're at it. I don't think Nibiru is online. If it is, it's a great, oh, it was online, but uh, no, no activation here. All right, going to battle phase. This is far over lethal. And uh, that was uh, that was an extremely powerful game two from the control deck in which turn one they made VFD and turn two they made 18 synchro cards. Really cool. Really great. Oh, man. Now, this is just the story of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Uh, no matter the format, no matter the quality of the control deck, no matter the pushedness of the spell and trap cards, combo finds a way. Uh, combo will find a way to weasel its way into almost everything. I I'm ashamed that I've been a part of it. I was spending a lot of time uh, brainstorming 003 and Aurora Dawn combos in Eldritch specifically, and uh, uh, whoa, a couple of um, a couple of games later, here we are. Oh, and uh, looks like we have had a uh, an Edo Pro moment, folks. A real Edo Pro moment, I believe that was a double crash, so likely we will be back into this game momentarily. Um, everyone at Alpha Cretin, uh, fix your game, Alpha. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's the last thing you saw. We, we just made it back into game three after an uh, Edo Pro bug. Uh, thanks to the Edo Pro staff for uh, the extremely quick turnaround. 
Um, and thankfully it happened at the start of the game. It was a double DC, so both players uh, are able to um, remake the game. And uh, we're going to see Adam Emancipator on the play once again. I mean, uh, put on a clinic game one and how uh, powerful the deck can be when allowed to pop off completely. But it's game three. You know, Boki came prepared, I am sure, and uh, will likely have something to say about it. <laughs> Imagine bricking now. Gosh. After all that. Oh! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> no! Cretin, you may have fixed your game. Fix your shuffler! Oh, gosh. El Lich Mirror Final. Oh. Okay, so looks like we're just going to set like eight or nine cards here. No huge game-breaking combo, but... Oh. Well, an extra card might do them good. You know, very possible that they accidentally just drew too many uh, normal summons. Uh, normaling a four here would be very good. And Gigas is just about the best one. You can bring back Gigas and uh, Dota Dota Dwarf Go 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 Glove at the uh, start of the game. And uh, Gallon Granite, I mean, this is pretty strong. What is your opponent going to have to um, conquistador into a Sanguine here? It looks like the Sanguine is happening, at least. Oh, they might be finally taking my advice and trying to resolve Sanguine before resolving Conquistador. Looks like it is going to resolve, so no Ash Blossom wouldn't have been uh, screwed out of that activation anyway. And here's Conquistador in a separate chain, like a good player, um, in order to hit that Gallant Granite. It's pretty good, but both of those monsters are still available. Of course, Go 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 uh, Giga says, if this card is in your graveyard, when you special a Go 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 monster, which you have many ways to do, you can special it as well. And here's a way to do that right now. An Emancipator sign targeting the Dodo -do Dwarf Go 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 Glove. If you've got a Hakero as well, it's going to be very bad. But if you don't, oh my, we might still be able to do it. All right, so we can activate the, um, oh, this is, is this not a Go Go Go? Oh, I think they're thinking about stacking right here. Yeah, so after the stack, they're going to special the Gigas. And we could make another four. We could make, uh, we can't make Halcafibrax with this. We can make Nightmare Phoenix. That's a pretty good one. And what do you know? What do you know? That's three Earths in Graveyard. Wow, that's going to fiend the Golden Land forever. And if there's a Block Dragon in the hand, plus an Extender, that's actually the end of the game. Like, Block Dragon, Adam Emancipator Researcher would win the game here. Gallant Granite, two! But it looks like instead they're going to do nothing. Okay, well, <laughs> that's the really unfortunate. Uh, we've got a Scarlet Sanguine in Graveyard, so we will be able to get a little bit of interaction here. Probably another copy of Conquistador. Hakero would be powerful as well. Get to get in for 2,500. Really frustrating that it looks like uh, Lunderdy drew into things like Nibiru versus the half of the deck that doesn't play any combo! For those of you saying if you had either of those in hand, wouldn't a brick turn one? Block Dragon is very much a brick in hand in the early stages of the game if you don't have the necessary material to uh, summon it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Block Dragon. I would be surprised uh, to see a Seeker or a Researcher. So, the two cards in hand that could still lead to a victory are exactly Ad Emancipator Seeker and Block Dragon. I think that is... A reasonable guess as to what's in the hand, provided it's not extremely bricky hand traps or something like um, Buster Dragon Destruction Sword. You know, it could be those two. And if it is those two, keeping your normal summon this turn is very important. You're going to have to play through Conquistador, of course. No, I, I don't mean Analyzer. I mean uh, Seeker. And there it is, Block Dragon. Uh, as expected, was in the opening hand. Ooh, and we found out why there was a brick. Additional, additional one here, Block Dragon. Uh, this is really good. Uh, by having the Block Dragon in attack position alongside the uh, Eldritch, the Golden Lord, you can ram them into each other. That Eldritch is going to the graveyard, prompting a Scarlet Sanguine if your opponent has it. 
uh, in order to get another Eldritch from deck in order to keep your Conquistador on. The Block Dragon's going to get a whole bunch of Earth Monsters, and you have one in the graveyard. If you can weasel two more, your whole board's going to be um, unable to be affected by Conquistador anyway. And wait, this is pretty strong. Is this really going to work? Uh, okay, so we've got uh, Gallant Granite, which does have requisite material. The Go-Go-Go Gigas is banishable. We've got the entire Adamancipator line, and Doki Doki, the remaining card! Whoa. This is crazy. Yeah, I think you're right, chat. The, the out for the Lich player was to conk your own Lich here. Conk, of course, can hit any face-up card, not just ones your opponent controls for some ungodly reason. If the Ad Emancipator player walks with this after turn one set passing, I take back every single bad thing I ever said against Go Onizuka. I apologize. You truly were the brain hack over limit. Discarding the Gigantes. I do like this. Gigantes in the graveyard, much more important than Gigantes on the field, especially when you've already got a rock. You don't want to banish a card from this graveyard. You want the material for Block Dragon. And Koakai Mairu Guardian says, do you have a hand trap? Not anymore. We know the Conquistador, but this has got to be exactly a way to get Eldritch in the unknown or else this is going to be full combo. All right, so here's the Ad Emancipator Researcher. There are... Two Earths in the graveyard, one more, and our entire board will be immune to destruction. Oh, wow. And another Doki off the top, it looks like. I, I might have missed the first couple, so if there was something better. Yup, a Gigas will be it. And a Gigas, Gigas, shockingly, is a Go-Go-Go -go -go monster. Uh, now, for what it's worth, you won't be able to activate the Go-Go-Go Gigas in graveyard because we did go to battle phase in order to get that block dragon off the field. And uh, as long as we make something like a Halka Fibrax... Uh, we can't do that yet. We have to get the Seeker out of our hand. But after that, as long as we make something like a Halka Fibrax, we could walk with this. Wow. Ad Emancipator, <laughs> through an unbelievable brick, is just leveraging the power of Block Dragon so fantastically to Plus! Oh, yes. Okay, Adamant's and Pater is and Raptide activating now. This could get anything. Oh, Dodo -do Dwarf, go, 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 glove is so good. And also the only relevant target. We could get Seeker here as well, but I, I don't know if that's the, the play. Depends on what you want to go into. If you're expecting to go into a uh, Halka Fibrax followed by an 8, that's maybe likely. And it looks like that is what, um, what Lundredy has their eyes set on. Cretan, absolutely right. As bad as this meta is, I love that just pure-ass go-go-go, no Utopia stuff, no Onomat crossover is now a part of this deck. Yes, that is correct. The Onomat searchers all but uh, jettisoned from uh, these builds. They're spells. You don't want to reveal them off of your Ad Emancipators. You just want the go-go-goes. <laughs> See, this is the problem. The Onomat cards, they're okay, but they don't. Go, go, go! And it's time, chat, to go! We're gonna seek her here. Oh. I am just speaking cringe at this moment. Let's see what we reveal off the top for cringe. <laughs> Worst one yet. Thank you. I appreciate it. Fire MBT. There's no one to replace me with. Good luck, chat. Cancel me over this. You won't. All right. We're gonna special summon Doki Doki. And uh, that is all the necessary material. Go, 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 Onizuka. Brain hack over limit. Gift Jane a sub. Oh, did Jane win? So the points increase exponentially for the, uh, the, uh, predictions. So we can't crown a winner until, uh, both the finals and the top three match are decided. Go, go, go to jail for that one. <laughs> That's fair. This meta is so cringe, it is literally impossible to out cringe. No, Jane came up with go, 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 Onizuka. <laughs> Uh, we thank you for your service. She is truly the hero we required. So from here, you can just do anything. You can go into Savage Dragon, you can go into Herald, you've got a uh, monster negation on field. You can prevent your opponent from ever activating anything ever again, which I think is what they're attempting to do. Going into Savage Dragon here, we're going to use Savage Dragon's effect. We're going to target, I think we've got, what, like a... Do we actually have anything in there? What do we have in here? We haven't said Hauk. Oh, Nightmare Phoenix! Nightmare Phoenix the equip to Borload Savage Dragon. Fantastic. 
<laughs> when was the last time you saw Nightmare Phoenix specifically uh, as the equip for Borlode Savage Dragon? Go, 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 go to Gulag. <laughs> Looks like we're finally going to see the Conquistador activation. This is the last time you're going to be able to. And yes, yes, the last remaining card was Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, but... Folks, it is very late to be activating effects like that. We're going to be able to uh, pop this copy of Savage, I expect. Uh, but we've got access to Herald. We've got access to Fours. We've got access to uh, the Token. I mean, we could just go anywhere from here. If there's an Aurorodon in this deck, it'd get even better. We're going into Link Spider here. Of course, you can use tokens as a Link material for something like Appaloosa. And what do you know? There's still a Block Dragon in the graveyard. Let's get that out as well. So this is a little rough. Um, we're like one material off where we want to be. We could make an Appaloosa for four, but then wouldn't be able to follow it up with a Herald. Of course, Herald isn't fantastic into this board regardless. I mean, you have to switch the Eldritch to attack position, which is kind of crusty. Oh! Boral Sword. Not what I would have expected, uh, given that we don't have a battle phase, but uh, is a good way to protect your monsters, especially if you aim to Union Carrier, locking your opponent out of the extra deck. Well, that, I mean, that does it. You gotta do what you gotta do to get a Dark Monster on field. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Oh, Chad, you all thought that they'd forgotten about the battle phase. No, they're living in 2030. You're in 2000 and late. IP Mascarena, and I think, not positive, but I think we still have the material for Block Dragon as well. Gosh, that is just not, that is not fair. Well, as long as there's not a Nibiru in the hand, this is absolutely fantastic, and it looks like there isn't. A jank board that does include an almost unkillable domain lock. <laughs> <laughs> Better idea, make Bore a Load Dragon, because it can't be targeted, but it can be run over by battle, you fool. Alright, looks like we're going for the Eldritch in the Graveyard. That's A-OK. -okay. And we're going to chain the Mascarena. What is our opponent... What are we going into here? Appaloosa, that's so strong! We'll be able to negate the hand effect of uh, Eldritch of the Golden Lord if we have another one in hand. We'll be able to negate the on-field effect of almost anything. They can't attack over our Appaloosa because we'll change them to defense position with Boral Sword Dragon. <laughs> this is so strong. Oh, I can't believe this is the MacGyver of Ad Emancipator boards. Like, in no scenario should this ridiculous board be winning the game. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is, this reminds me of, of the le famous uh, online meme that says, I do not know how you did it. You did every step wrong, but you got the right answer. It looks like despite set one passing turn one, it is very possible that Lund is able to walk from this game unscathed by the grace of... <laughs> Of Appaloosa Boral Sword to keep the monster in defense position. Oh wow! And the next turn, it's just over. I mean, we have all three Adam Emancipators in hand. We have Block Dragon in the graveyard. Got material to banish. I mean, it's just over. If if we're allowed to get to next turn, it's the game is now done. Summon Jet Synchron doesn't do it. We're locked out of the extra deck by the Dragon Buster equipped a Boral Sword. This is the largest brain play. All right, so we're going for the uh, Scarlet Sanguine to get a Conquistador. Not not going to matter in the slightest. It's just too late for the Conquistador, I think. It can eat the Boralode and unlock the extra, but, like, eventually. As long as we start with Block Dragon, none of our rocks can be uh, targeted. Oh, we don't have the material for Block Dragon just yet. Looks like we're going to prompt a very early Conquistador here, which is likely going to tag for the Boral Sword Dragon. That's frustrating, but hardly the end of the world. So I guess the real question is, like, what's in the extra deck? It's like, there's only five cards left. Oh, a whiff off the analyzer. It'd have to be, like, Dragite. All right, so Researcher. I guess if you whiff Researcher and Analyzer and Seeker, you could theoretically lose the game. 
Okay, so we, we found one. In fact, we found only one. Wow, 10 cards and only one target. Okay, Koakai Mairu Guardian. How many more targets do we have in deck? We actually have very few cards that can be summoned. So Draguide's fine here, but you absolutely have to hit two. Of course, it counts Nibiru's, uh, it counts Tuners, which makes it different than the other ones. Here comes the Draguide. No, yes, no, yes, yes. Okay, three. That should be enough. So we'll bounce the entire board here. Um, and uh, now we just have to summon the Block Dragon back. That's 55, uh, 71. Uh, an Ad Emancipator Seeker in attack position should be game, I believe. Oh, and the Nibiru in the hand doing nothing but decreasing the attack on the Appaloosa. It must have been the draw for turn because last turn was such a perfect time to use it. Oh, what a rip. Just very slightly too late. Oh. Looks like Seeker Whiffed as well, like it matters. Oh no, it got Doki Doki. So, um... And now we have to find a way to get these two monsters off the field. I bet we can go into Herald. That would be pretty good. Uh, I don't think we've at, we've used Herald from the extra yet. We have not. Uh, we have the ability to shuffle back Raptite as well, if we so desire. Though I don't think we have a way to get to it. We need something, right? Yeah, that'll do it. Nightmare Unicorn to clear zones. Uh, it's not pretty, but it gets the job done. From here, we can activate the uh, the Block Dragon and Graveyard. This is 22, 25, 3k, 800. And uh, unless I've done my math really, really wrong, I do believe that is just about 8,000. Uh, Loki thinking real quick. Does he have some kind of, like, battle fader? No, we're going for Scarlet Sanguine here to set a copy of uh, what I imagine is going to be, like, a Conquistador or a Haketo. Yeah, Haketo it is. We'll get in for 800 here. And wow. Wow, wow, wow. From the jaws of defeat, Lund has snatched victory. An unbelievable best of three, followed by an absolutely miserable last game they were able to turn around from a turn one brain hack over limit tier play. That... Man, I mean, I don't, I don't get excited for Eldritch and Ad Emancipator particularly often, but that's about as excellent as a best of three could have been given those two decks. First two complete blowouts uh, with combo finishes, and the third game actual back and forth that required some ingenuity in order to out uh, Ad Emancipator player three cards in extra deck Herald, and I have no idea what the other two were. I think one is a Cerberus. But no idea what the last one is. Um, recycling Raptide is their only other way to remain in this game. And almost out of targets for the uh, Ad Emancipators in their deck. They whiffed on two. I mean, just great. Just fantastic. Um, but chat correct as always. The Eldritch player could have saved a lot of grief uh, just by conquistadoring their own Eldritch in order to prevent the Block Dragon activation and the damage step. So with that, we have your final round. It's going to be Lundredy on Ad Emancipator versus Cyber VX Jason Leonard on Eldlich. I will let them know, and we will be back momentarily. Mm -hmm.